So what is going on YouTube? My name is Mehul and welcome back to another Rust video in which we'll be implementing, we'll be seeing how we can work with some core data types in Rust Lang. Now, um, right now I am on the code dam Rust playground, which you can visit from codedam.com slash playground slash Rust to follow along with me. So let's get started. In Rust, how you create a variable is using the let keyword. At least that's the one way. So what Rust does is that it allows you to create variables with different data types. And what you have to do is write the variable, variable name first, and then a colon, and then the type of that data. So I'm going to start off with booleans because they are simple to understand. And you can either have a false value, F-A-L-S-E, false value, or a true value, right? So as simple as that. So if I go ahead and go down and print it using the print line macro, macros are something which we'll understand later on as we proceed. But uh, yeah, it's a macro, it's not a function, although it looks like a function, but you know, you can see that an, it has this exclamation mark, which is a distinction for a macro for print line. So I can say uh, variable name is equal to, and then I can pass in variable name like that right so if i go ahead and run this code right here you're going to see we get variable name is true if i change it to false we're going to get variable name is false so the thing with rust is that a lot of times it can actually automatically detect the data type of the variable which you are trying to insert so uh, a lot of times you can actually just leave the type itself rust would automatically deduce the type of the variable on the basis of the data type and your code should still run just fine so moving on we also have signed and unsigned integers in rust so i'm going to say signed integer is uh, let's say just a regular number minus 100 why not and how do i denote this using the i keyword and then the memory space so you see we have all these options 8, 64, 32, 16, 128. So what this actually denotes is that if I go with 8, I would have a memory space of 8 bits that is 1 byte and in that 1 byte I'm going to store minus 100. So obviously you can see that if I have a smaller size and if I try to store a larger value it will result in overflow and that value won't be available. So there's that. So I can go ahead and paste this and I can say s int value is uh, s int right so if i go ahead and run this we're going to see that our s int is in fact minus 100. now there's another data type in rust known as the unsigned value and unsigned value are the values which can only contain zero or positive so if i give this an unsigned value of 8 strange things would happen because you see i'm trying to give it a negative value here but i only said that with unsigned um, integers, you can give zero or positive value. So let's just go ahead and make this unsigned integer. Let's run it. And what you're gonna see is that we obviously get um, punished by Rust itself that you cannot store unsigned values. But if somehow you were able to store unsigned values, what would happen is that Rust would store it in the memory in the form of um, you know just unsigned value assuming that you would never store negative values and when you store negative values you'll get an opposite value in a, a positive value on the other side of the spectrum of binary um, which would be treated as a large positive value so at least that what happens in C and C++ so you can see that rust straight out of the bat does not really allow us to do nasty stuff at all so that's one of the main selling points of Rust is that it's it's kind of like more, you know, just, just allows you to do less, less funky stuff out of the box. Apart from, you know, how C works. So it, it, it's basically just a better version of C in that case. All right, so let's just uh, make this, uh, or let's just leave it actually. Yeah, or what we can do is that we can just use something known as I size here right so what I size does is that it allows you to have a signed integer based on the size of your operating system so if your operating system is 64 bit you're gonna get an I64 here 
if your operating system is 32-bit, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna get an I32 here, and we can verify the size right here um, using something known as the memory um, inside the memory namespace inside Rust. So let's just go ahead and access that. So I'm gonna say uh, size of value right here, and I'm gonna pass in my variable that would be the u int, right? So I'm gonna say this is that and the size is in fact this. So if I go ahead and run this now, what you're gonna see is that we get the value is minus 100 and size is eight. Now what does eight mean? That means eight bytes, that is 64 bits. So the container in which this code is running is actually running a 64 bit operating system. So that's that. If I, you know, just, just put the size here as well, what you're gonna see is that if I do std mem size of val and if I pass in s int here and run the code again we're gonna see that this size is one that is just one byte the other one was eight bytes because I specified I want it to be the same as my operating system of course if I change it to 128 you're gonna see that that changes as well now it's 16 bytes that is 128 bits so there's that we can also have characters in Rust, so you can just go ahead and specify my cat as right away as a character. You can also give it a type of cat if you want. Now, strangely enough, if you're coming from a C or C++ background, you're gonna assume that character gets one byte, and uh, that is wrong. In Rust, what you're gonna see is, let me just actually show you you're gonna see that the character is in fact not one byte but four bytes so let's just verify that as well using the size of operator and uh, what i'm gonna pass in here is the my car right so if i try to run this code now what we're gonna see is that we get the size as four not one so that means car in rust is four bytes that is 32 bits now the reason for that is because rust considers the character you are pasting here or whatever you want right here this could be a unicode character as well so you can have you know any sort of uh, character here rust is will support that correctly will store that correctly and would most probably display that correctly as well on your terminal if your terminal supports it so that's the reason Rust considers uh, characters to be four bytes instead of the traditional one byte system, which is deployed by C and C++. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to like and subscribe. In the next videos, we're gonna be discussing more about Rust. So that's all for this one, and I'll see you then in the next video really soon.